I will okay. believe you every time because it hap- something goes wrong every third podcast. Really? Isn't that often? <laughs> no, I mean, there's two There's two I, I of you to screw up. I, I need to blow mm. my nose. Yeah, last time Wanda recorded uh, OC Remix over his commentary for the <laughs> oh, entire podcast. that's right. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, because my entire setup got nuked really hard, so poof. Yeah. Okay, welcome to Four Nerds Save the Universe episode Number 19. 18, 19. Wait, Damn 19. it. You're oh, wait, behind. You're You're recording off. that? Yes. But Did I we get shell nose, nose blowing? And we got shell nose no. blowing. Chief <laughs> runs with gold signs was the last week, so I guess we've <laughs> not abandoned that tradition of not being able to start or end these. That's fine. In That's any fine. Same Can we start this again when I'm not Blow your nose? Nope. No, I no, I I'll just okay. pixelate your entire camera. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. So yeah, it's episode fine. nineteen. It's fine. It's fine. It's yep. fine. All right. I have a question for you, Wonderbot. Yes. What is the Pathfinder's job in Mass Effect Andromeda, and why does he matter? To seek out strange new <laughs> life, new uh... civilizations. To boldly. No, never mind. Mm-hmm. Figurehead for everybody to bitch at. It seems like <laughs> not, even, not even figurehead though. He's somehow like. The leadership of this entire initiative. He's the one person that can single handedly accomplish the entire goal of their entire mission that features tens of thousands of people. Yeah, it's well, a remember, bit there are buggery. multiple Pathfinders, or at least there were. Nah. We don't no, know. No, there's if the other only ones one. Even alive. if there were other Pathfinders, it'd be like Shepard in um, Mass Effect, where every other Spectre is pointless and meaningless except for the we're one that's killed. evil. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then they all die or stuff like that. And it's just like, well. I, um, I've, yeah. I've been trying to reconcile this about Mass Effect Andromeda because in mm-hmm. uh, in Mass Effect's original trilogy, for the majority of the series, nobody like hero worships Shepard at all. Right. Like, it's yeah. really it mostly comes down to the third game when you're this big public figure where that's spearheading the entire war, which people actually believe is happening now. That suddenly everyone's like worshiping <laughs> Shepard practically as a hero mm-hmm. character, but at the beginning, you are just a good marine. Who gets mm-hmm. enlisted mm-hmm. in a subject because uh, basically yeah, Saren and when... is a total prick, but he goes off the, the edge of space called the mm-hmm. Attican Traverse, where he's next to the alien systems that are from the other, like from outside the government, and you could spark a war by sending a fleet in there. But Saren should be stopped, so we'll appoint this human as a specter and send then send them in after that on, on like a rogue like like a strike team mission to investigate <laughs> and take down right. Saren. And and an important distinction with how that's brought up in Mass Effect One and uh, uh, Two to an extent is that uh, when people are bringing up like how cool Shepard is, they're really more asking about like the situations he's involved in, and it's not so much about him. It's like, what's going on like over here? You're a reliable source. Like, Tell us about it. Because yeah, like, there is the- a little bit of that. They have like the news person interview uh, him and stuff like that, which yep. comes back in all the games. But it's not hero worship until like about the third yeah, because yeah, the game. whole first never... game, people are like, oh, wow, I heard you survived a coups is like the right. main thing yes. you might hear, depending on your backstory. And that's not like hero worship even. It's just like, oh, I heard about you because of this one thing, and that's it. Right, right. So it's Perhaps weird to me it... playing Andromeda where everywhere you go, everyone's like, oh, my God, you're the Pathfinder. <laughs> and then you're mm-hmm. like, like as if you're like the single person that's going to save the entire organization. But then like, when you get down to what the Pathfinder's responsibilities are, he seems to be like a really good survey team. Mm. Like mm-hmm. he's like, there's yeah. some there's some iron over there, and I think this place it, might be a safe yeah. spot for habitation if we set up 17 force fields to make it safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's an odd thing with narrative. I mean, if people go by the, like the hero's journey, it seems like you've gone from zero to a hundred really yeah. fast, yeah. and it's a little disconcerting. I've I played a number of games where you start off really small, a nobody, mm-hmm. and then you eventually earn everyone's uh, mm-hmm. earns everyone's like trust and admiration and whatnot. But it, it's peculiar how just the presence of an AI, I, it's really just the presence of the Sam AI that makes the Pathfinder a Pathfinder. I think the Pathfinders are the only ones. Which is a little bit it. silly, because like if it's this like AI that can talk with everybody forever, you might as well just make it available to like a ton of people and have redundancy. At the things. same time, they mm-hmm. probably still a little bit leery of the idea of having uh, yeah, but like, a, an AI have access to someone's. But at the same, system, well, okay, so everything. we're getting to spoiler territory that I was afraid I'd, uh, to talk about last time. Keith, how far have you gotten? 
I have just reached EOS for run around for two hours doing stuff there. Wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. We've gotten farther than that. <laughs> yeah. We've like 100%ed almost all of EOS and we're on to the next planet and we're like 80% of that one. So it's. Yeah. It's uh, like the difference between like me being like, let's keep up with my recording schedule versus you being like, I can record eight hours every day of this exact game. We actually <laughs> recorded it lately. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't touched it in like almost a week now. Yeah. But your marathons did, like, were legendary. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Backlogs are nice. Of course, I've run out of several of them. I, I, I went an entire month without recording any Digimon, and today was the first day in, like, two months that I haven't put out an episode for it. And I'm like, ah. Uh, <laughs> and then, like, Hollow Knight and No Man's Sky I'm out of. But, like, Nier mm -hmm. and Rain World and, like, some other things I am good to go for. So it's kind of this, like, <laughs> weird balancing act. It's, yeah. it's peculiar when a game is so long, but you only get halfway through it but you have mm -hmm. enough content for months like th then you just pick up it pick I, up the game later it's like yeah, what? yeah. As long as yep. it's a weird system you have to context switch yeah and as then long as when you it's not a it. <laughs> game that requires like a lot of skill then mm -hmm. it's fine like hyper light drifter actually killed itself for me and mm -hmm. so i never finished the game because uh, the game, like, I got stuck in an infinite black void, if I remember right, mm. and I couldn't escape for, like, two or three weeks. So when they finally gave me the game back, I, like, tried playing for an hour, and I'm like, I'm dying. I can't, I can't like, remaster this because I was right before the last boss, and there's no way I was going to get my skill cap back um... mm -hmm. uh, without, like, wasting a lot of time and frustration on a game that wasn't doing that well. So eventually I was just like, I, I can't. <laughs> So you mean it's a minor tangential upset. side thing, but when you play the mini game in a uh, night in the woods, do you immediately think of Hyperlight Drifter too? Yes. Like it's it, it's weirdly similar on a basic level. <laughs> yeah. All the way down to the dash moving and everything. Yeah. So it's boiled down a little bit too much. Mm. Yeah. Now gone I mean, from actually, a so to back a to a tangent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back to Andromeda. Um. So Shelly, you were saying it goes from zero to hundred really quickly. Were you saying that about like? Basically, you start the game and everyone is immediately like hero worshiping you, uh, like saying like, "Oh, you're the Pathfinder." It's, like, well, that's the, the deal. there's some there's it's some weird... skepticism by uh, the occasional. Yeah, it's a weird person. dichotomy. Like every single like major leader, like there's what are there like four faction leaders on the Nexus, which is you know the Citadel equivalent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And each one of them is, like, being super friendly to you and sucking up to you and, like, deferring to you constantly. And then there's Addison, uh -huh. who's like, watch your back. And, yeah. <laughs> she's like I'm the, wearing clown makeup. Yeah. She's this, like, <laughs> ugly lady that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the one famously behind the, like, my face is tired thing. And everyone's going, uh -huh. you know, your father made this possible, but you... Mm -hmm. We don't know anything about you, or if you're even competent. But, like, it, it's weird, because you go back and forth between everybody, like, worshipping the ground, like, you're standing on, like, acting like you're this ultimate expert and Thank stuff like that. Thank you so much for clearing and then, out these like, critters. Almost immediately, maybe even, like, the next line of dialogue is them switching around and being like, but you're just an, you know, effectively, like, the, you're just a kid, so, like, we don't really trust you, and we don't really, mm -hmm. like, believe in you. So, like... E there was a like a whole crew get together talk thing that Keith hasn't gotten to, um, so I'm not going to talk about it beyond just like all the people walk it away. It ends with like... everybody just leaving really <laughs> snipey comments, and you're sitting there being like, "We just saved, we just terraformed an entire planet. Everything's awesome, <laughs> and you're just being bitches to me. What? <laughs> it was the hero's so journey is not a is not is one that's fraught with peril." It it's like if Titus wasn't a this whiny little bitch and everybody treated matters. him as such. Well, uh, oh, that's always so damn annoying in video games where you like save towns and people are like, oh, it's you. And thanks like, for saving like, our town, but it's done it better. Yeah, it's like saving our town. Did someone steal your sweet roll? I'm like, mother, I just it's, killed a dragon. It's super yeah. off putting. Well, it's super off putting when an NPC acknowledges you in a way it, like. Is like yeah. random ambient dialogue of them being like, "Ew, I think they're gonna steal from us," and like acting like you like you're a miscreant <laughs> or something when you're literally the person yeah. who saved everyone just a second ago, and maybe even them <laughs> yeah. in a cutscene. Uh -huh. <laughs> like the exact yeah, person think... you just saved is suspicious of you now. Mm -hmm. What I didn't like most about the whole like, I as we we brought up examples of uh, situations in which people still have some kind of uh, tentativeness regarding. 
uh, your yes. ability to fill the position. Uh, but it, there are instances where they go, oh, this is what you want to do? Well, you're the Pathfinder. So what the hell is that supposed to mean? We we do what you say. You know, it's just, yeah, it's like deferring all responsibility onto the singular person. But you're person. the pathfinder. It's, it's so weird. So what you say goes. It's just like what? And isn't the pathfinder like twenty years old in this game? She's not so very old. Yeah, she's yeah, like so mid twenties. So they're like, like, yeah, this twenty year old, they probably know everything about how the universe works. They got it figured out. And the it thing gets, is, your character says weird. I'm not. When you mm -hmm. like sub out Pathfinder with what they actually are and like what their actual actual job is, because they it? are they're just a surveying team basically. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. They're, they're going... just really good at scanning rocks. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you're gonna save the day, geologist. <laughs> <laughs> Which should yeah, be my dream game, but it hasn't been. <laughs> it's like if you actually, it, it would be pretty much like if you took Keith pre, like back when he was uh, still like a geology <laughs> student, and, and made then him the said, hero of Kavach. Yeah, handed him a gun and said, "Good luck. We need you to find us a new planet to like land on. By the way, you need to nice. make the planet livable." Because all the planets are shit. Oh, yeah, by the uh, way. And there's murder there's... monsters after yeah. you. Good luck. <laughs> you you seriously just like... are just a geologic survey team slash, mm -hmm. like, environmental scientist. At, at the same yeah. time, I mean, our our character was the, the female writer. Yeah. And she specifically served in the Peace Corps or whatever they called them. Pact Corps? Pe mm -hmm. It starts with a P. Uh, but she, she had actually served her time at least in military uh, campaigns. Yeah, it, there, there right, are so implications that, that you should defer to. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Like, even the Pathfinder has done military action. Like, they, they talk mm -hmm. about it every once in a while, but there's no... Like, with Shepard, it was very clear where he came from. With the Pathfinder, uh -huh. it's this, like, kind of weird nebulous, like, every man background for a very specific character, and it's odd. Oh yeah, your own, <laughs> your, own, your own character doesn't get to have a backstory. They only give a context yeah. entry to your sibling. <laughs> your own character is like, I don't know, let's try to make it up yeah. as we go oh, along. So if you play as Sarah, the backstory is applied to the other dude? Yeah, yeah for me, Sarah and has a codec, codex entry, which is probably the same one that the si other sibling gets when you're playing as Sarah. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. But like, there, there's no explanation of like, who or what. Everybody else has m had more like character backstory development. And uh -huh. like you can talk to every character and be like war stories, and they'll tell you a little bit about their past and stuff like that. And then uh -huh. you're like, "That's nice." And then you just walk away, and they're just like, "I want to hear like some return." I think like... talking with Liam was the only case <laughs> well, where so, in which he asked about us, yeah. and we actually developed information about us. Yeah, but like Liam mm -hmm. asked a question, we're like, "Yeah, yeah, we did this," and then just like it moved on, and it's just like, "What?" <laughs> And, like, we were part of the Peacekeepers, I guess, or, like, some kind mm -hmm. of Oh, maybe faction? that's what it was. And it starts with the P. Yeah. We yeah. Were, uh, apparently, the Pathfinder is was part of the Peacekeepers, but there's no explanation of who or what. What they did. Yeah. And, like, it would have been great if it tied into something that had actually happened in one of the previous games mm -hmm. or gave us something to, like, look back to. But no. Yeah. For me, what... What's That's problematic a, so far point. is I'm now a few hours into the first planet, and I've exhibited one special skill the Pathfinder has that nobody else could possibly do, as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very... You found the path. Here's another warning sign, by the way, is that it's very Dragon Age Inquisition. Because in Dragon mm -hmm. Age Inquisition, you get the mark on your hand, and you're the only person who can jo who can close void portals, so you've got to go all over the planet to close all the void mm -hmm. por portals of the entire throughout the entire campaign to save the day. That's the premise oh, of the yeah, entire Oh, yeah, if you go to the void portals in the past, you can charge them and then enter them in the future and get better items. What? <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry about it. I just got it. really confused. <laughs> Nothing. Don't worry about it. Somebody out there is going to get that joke, and oh. that one's for them. Is that, is, are they happy they got the joke or not happy they got the joke? Uh, they're unhappy that I've derailed the conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to get you back. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but like Inquisition had the whole thing where like you get the magical you get the magical power to close portals, so that means you're the one that has to close all the portals. Uh, but in Inquisition, the thing that opened the portals in the first place is what gave you that power, and that was the incident that led to your character suddenly becoming important. Mm -hmm. The Pathfinder though finds alien relics nobody knew existed, finds glyphs that nobody knew existed, uses those glyphs to use the devices to to terraform a planet that nobody knew needed terraforming. 
So but we're, Sam we're supposed is to be super able... intelligent and is able to yeah. decipher those glyphs. Yeah. But the whole so premise of the trip and the Pathfinder the... is that we're going to already good planets that we we're already supposed to be good for settling, and we were supposed to just go there. But the Pathfinder is mm-hmm. finding alien relics that we never knew existed and using those to terraform planets that didn't we we didn't we didn't think need terraforming in the first place. So like. The entire special thing that makes him a capable protagonist is completely based around stuff that nobody knew existed and is not part of why he got the job in the first place or why that job exists in the first place or why Sam exists in the first place. It's like they read the script of what's going to happen later and planned ahead and made a character that could do that stuff and that's why they're special as opposed Mm -hmm. to making it make sense in the universe why that character exists in the first place. Because like everyone hero worships you as the chosen one and the story makes you the chosen one by making it so that nobody else could figure out these glyph things basically but that nobody knew that was going to be there in the first place when they made you Pathfinder. Can I make a prediction? (laughs) Can I make a prediction? Go for Uh, it. So... So, sort of spoilers, the villains are just this race of sort of zealots that believe it's their duty to colonize the Well, realm. we don't even know that. We know almost nothing about the cat. We just know they're, they've got they like, know the, the they, religious they, background. We just know one the of them always looks sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got this kind of like, he looks like Gizmo, sort of. He's and, got like Gizmo's face. And, he does. and he he's like upset Gizmo from that Gremlins. you were able to activate the relics where he isn't. My prediction is that one of the other Pathfinders um, is either is probably going to have their Sam ripped out of them and potentially used by the villains, or they're going to be after yours. Well, they're at, they're definitely after. Well, they're after. Yours. No, no. Here's what's going to but- happen. You're going to unlock all the portals except for the last one, and then one of the other Pathfinders is going to like leap in at the last second and be like, "Ha ha! I have all the glory." <laughs> there's no, there's no, it, the no, game was written by no Square portals, Enix, though, right? All, all the portals were in Inquisition. <laughs> Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you goofed him. You goofed him hard. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> My life is about getting goofed. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Oh, what do they call it? It's not a MacGuffin, is it? Plot device. Uh, Mac- it, is, it is. It's just... MacGuffin is when you have a yeah, item If it's like the One Ring, has... it's a MacGuffin. Well, the One Ring has, like, special powers. The idea yeah. behind a MacGuffin is that it has, like, nothing... Um, oh. Defined about it that it can work with, isn't that the case? Oh. I think it's just the magical uh, relic, the whole plot that uh, that drives the story. Yeah, it's, okay. the it's more. It's more. The plot. Uh, MacGuffin yes. is just broader than I thought. It's just okay. a dramatic word for a plot. An device. object or device it's in a movie book that serves as the trigger the for the plot. So See, yeah, MacGuffin. I would have actually been really okay. happy if uh, box. if right if like the writer twins had just been like really good at linguistics to the point of being kind of like comical about it. And so we just have like a language nerd with a gun running around, like being like, "I love deciphering words," and like people I have once, to tear away from it. It would be so I much once, more believable. Here's a tangent because we're we're good at those. I once wrote a story um, mm-hmm. where one of the characters was the goddess of linguistics, and her superpower was the ability to split items that were compound nouns into two different nouns. So one uh, plot revolved around her so getting a, a goldfish. Coach? Did she make a coach <laughs> and then a stage? She would split it into a coach and a stage, yes. Like she had like scribble nuts <laughs> powers? Yes. If you gave her cottage oh, cheese, she course. split it into cheese and a cottage. <laughs> <laughs> if you gave her a goldfish, she split it into a generic fish and a bar of gold. Um, air so yeah, whenever when <laughs> you would get some weed and some air. <laughs> no, what? you would... Uh, it's fine, Shell. No, You'll figure just, it out when you're older. A rose um, <laughs> you would get a rose and some weed. Uh, Wait, anyway, no, but, but buds can be anything. Bud yes, related. but they can also be weed. Shell. Anyway, so yeah, whenever <laughs> so the thought of linguistics powers reminded me of that little anecdote from when I was much much younger and writing stories. Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that, that's quite the power. So that's a fun tangent. I, I guess just, just to get so back. So, what on, would a broadsword turn into? A, a dame <laughs> and a sword. <laughs> you didn't see my eyebrow wiggle, but that was weird. <laughs> uh, we'll just check it out in the uh, in, a in dying the woman with in the, the sword editing. stuck in her. You guys don't hey. watch these. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, you why would I watch, watch them? I filmed it. <laughs> Nobody want to watch it again. They're like, oh, look at how I was funny when I derailed Keith's point twice. So we've complained about Mass Effect, but I have to say, still, I actually really like the game. 
it's a lot of fun to watch. It's fun to play. Like the, yeah, the dashing, good. the jumping, the fact that you can fly overhead, hold right uh, mouse button to like iron scope, and then you like hover there and you can shoot people. That's great. I mm. I switched over to uh, inf infiltrator, so now I have like red mm -hmm. outlines around everybody. So like, I can stand really far away and snipe people in the face, and they all like start freaking out because they don't know where they're getting shot from. And then later on, I That's get mean. over to where they're dead, and I uh, I loot all the bodies, and I'm like, yeah. No ah, danger. so Wander found the unfair way to play. Uh, there's I'm, so I'm just, many like I'm just ways to get out by the. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm bummed out by the backwardness of it, where it's like. It's the it's the Mass Effect game where I'm waiting for people to shut up. Yeah. Oh. Um, it, no, mm -hmm. it's it's absolutely true. We uh, so you colonize Eos later on, which should be no spoilers. But the there were a planet. bunch of NPCs. <laughs> yeah, there should be a bunch of uh of like a bunch of NPCs to talk to, and one of them is like the head engineer. And we went over mm -hmm. to talk to him, and he just is like. Oh, you're the Pathfinder. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you. And like, whatever. And he has like a bunch of dialogue options. And Shell's like, okay, you need to click on every one of them. And I'm like, this guy has no quest for us and no bearing <laughs> of the plot. Please, we have other Wait, things to do. Shell wanted to hear the lore. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's what no a surprise. surprise, but it's just this like, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's the game where I I'm trying to find where to get my lore from because mm -hmm. we can we can squeeze. I mean, it's a damp rag. Well, you rag. don't read the codexes that when we receive well, them, so... Well, yeah, because there's so much, mm -hmm. like... We spent... Like, Keith, how many episodes did you spend on the Nexus? Talking to people and doing quests there? Uh, I, I, was, I was getting ready to leave... Well, the Nexus and the starting ship. I was getting ready to finally... I was about to finally land on EOS for the first time uh, when I finished episode 10. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got around that because, <laughs> one, we didn't long. talk to anybody on the Tempest... Because I was like, no, I want to go to EOS because Nexus was too long. And yeah, the I also was the making my episodes I've like seen an hour so far long. for getting to the first real level is uh, most people take about five hours to get there. That's huge. Like, by the I, way, I the, game, the game it, the game teased me super hard, by the way, because you meet a geologist oh? and he's like, you want to talk rocks? And then I'm like, yeah. And then he doesn't. <laughs> And then he Aww. sells you drugs. <laughs> you, can, you can even <laughs> say yes, and then he doesn't talk about rocks. He just gives you a, a rock quest. And I'm like, that you lied to me. <laughs> you Aww. lied to me, game. <laughs> you can write a mod. Well, I will say that uh, an actual there. slogan we used at times in my geology major would be uh, hitting rocks for science. And that is actually uh, the quest you get for hitting ro for uh, the geology guy. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm still mad about the very the basic premise of the game being that your mm -hmm. character's primary function only exists on accident, but it should be the entire plan for why he's there in the first place. And that, ah, ah, chicken and egg, chicken egg. Yeah. It's kind of weird because um, it, it it's like this whole prophecy thing. It, it feels like kind of a setup for like a prophecy Bait yeah. oriented quest line, but there's they like shied away from the aspects of a prophecy oriented plot that make it work. It's like it's a magical yeah. oracle quest story thing, but exactly. it's exactly that's Effect. it. That's the best way to put <laughs> it. Know. Yeah, and the fact that it's Mass Effect is weird <laughs> too. So, yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't any more thoughts on Andromeda? Uh, the multiplayer is kind of boring, but I think well, that's just because I've played it was Warframe before. On. And probably. I, I mean, feel like really, the multiplayer was tacked on. Yeah, the problem with the multiplayer for me is it's kind of an excuse for them to cash shop, which is annoying mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. like, I already paid 64 bucks for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um... Do they, the, the, does it have booster packs again, like Mass Effect 3 oh, yeah. did? Oh, yeah. Um, really? But, like, the, the issue is they give you, like, a bunch of, like, generic humans, and you pretty mm -hmm. much have to rely on RNG to get any of the more interesting classes. Uh. Which super sucks. Um, and then uh, all you can do are like five missions. But mm -hmm. until you actually have better equipment, you really can only do one. And even then, it's barely beatable. And then you redo that mission over and over and over again. And like, I will admit right now I am playing Warframe, which is kind of the same thing. Except for <laughs> it has the time to like 
kind of make itself work, and it has the variety, so I don't feel, mm -hmm. you know, crammed into one location to be frustrated by it. Mm -hmm. um, but Warframe is also, like, very much trying to make you pay money very hard. Yeah, kind of. Like It's not actually that obnoxious about it. It yeah. could be a lot worse. I, I've Yeah, it could be a lot worse. Like, imagine in Warframe if you had to rely purely on, like, buying... Okay, so the way it works in Mass Effect Andromeda... Why is my encoding overloaded? Um, that's concerning. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, Almost so like for... two people talking. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. that's why. Uh, for Mass Effect Wonder Andromeda... Wonderpod's interrupting himself. I do that. Um, is yeah. it an echo? No, no it's, he's just uh... interrupting himself with his asides. Um, yeah. It sounds like he's uh... being talked over, but it's him. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I noticed that when he records his videos, sometimes he asks questions to himself as though he was prompted by someone to ask that question. Like like it's, the villain from Archer? I, don't, I haven't seen enough of yeah. all Archer. Yeah, I, I just looked over and uh, regular OBS was using like 60% of my CPU, which was really concerning. Anyway, sorry. Um, but so uh, for Mass Effect and Drama, the way the, the way the loot crate system works is you have uh you have you know two different currencies the uh the basic kind and the like cash shop variety and mm -hmm. so the first two chests can be bought for just like in-game money and you get about five thousand per round so you get to mm -hmm. buy like one basic crate per round and in that crate is usually maybe one gun maybe mm -hmm. one mod and like three consumable items that you don't really need that much. Like, if you play well enough, you really don't need these things. And so you end up, like, doing, like, a 20-minute mission to maybe get a gun. And, like, I, I've i only done, like, maybe 5, 10 so far, so I haven't, like, found any classes. I know when I was playing, I think Batbeard got a Krogan, so good for him. But mm -hmm. uh, if you want to get the good chances for anything, you have to grind for two or three missions and pay a small amount of money just to be able Aww. to afford, like, the good stuff. And uh, so pretty much if you actually want to have a good time in the multiplayer, you either shell mm -hmm. out some money for it, uh, you know, to get some good stuff right away. Like, I I, I pre-ordered the Deluxe Edition, which got me a couple of crates um, and helped out a little bit. Is there something wrong with the video feed? It pauses every once in a while. Oh. Yeah, that's the high encoding thing I was talking about, Shell. Oh. Yeah. Um, anyway... Don't uh, worry, folks. By episode 30, we'll have this whole podcasting thing figured out. I'll have a new computer that <laughs> has an even better CPU. Um, Can I just take two computers and hook them to it, each it other? It pauses for power. like a second or two sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's doing that, which is super annoying. Anyway, um, I'll figure it out momentarily. Uh, but so, like, it, it just feels kind of like shitty scummy to me because... Mm -hmm. I've already paid, like, a ton of money for this game, and mm -hmm. having to, um, having to pay even more money to play, like, the tacked-on multiplayer, and it's, like, not a small amount of money either, if you want to get, like, a decent amount. With downloadable mm -hmm. content, I think it's the end of the day when you just paid for a product and that was it. Now there's, you know, paid for D DLC, paid for multiplayer. Uh, they and it just they, sucks like... because it came out the same day the game did. Okay. Yeah, like right. multiplayer was added the, on later. It's part of the shittiness of why, of like, what comes with being an EA property. Aside right. from the part where being a mandated sequel in the first place to a franchise that should have never had more sequels anyway, is the mm. idea... Like, they make mandates. Like, they're like, every game mm -hmm. will now have an online pass, was a thing for a while. And yes. Now every game must have microtransactions, which is what happened to Dead Space 3, and Mass Effect mm -hmm. 3, and, Mass and uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, and now, and now Mass Effect Andromeda. Like, there's always some kind of weird tacked-on system to try to sap more money out of you, be it, like, mm -hmm. Dead Space, like, weird resource farming microtransactions, or, like, yeah, like, this is, like, I think the third game in a row from Bioware that has a multiplayer mode with like some sort of weird booster pack system thing put in there mm -hmm. to try to get money out of you. And I don't know how it is in Inquisition, Inquisition and Andromeda because I immediately stopped looking at them after the first one. But in three, you would buy random booster packs that then that were themselves also RNG as to what you'd get as a result. You couldn't buy the class you wanted. I think so it's it was also... Extra, it was like Hearthstone. 
Yeah, I think yeah, the best I... part about being friends with Wander is I haven't had to buy a game or DLC you in like occasionally. three years. You, we, okay, so uh, on this note, you want to talk about uh, you Tokiden? Bought, I assume you bought... Oh, God, I... yeah, we can talk about Tukiden. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I do have plot points. Tukiden, I still have, Tukiden... I have... I have lore holes to bring up later, though, for Andromeda. <laughs> Okay. Well, well I also let's, wanted let's, to... let's space out Andromeda for a little bit. Yeah. Seeing as I don't want to just be well, the Andromeda cast. Well, you two are cast. like Shell and Wander. Just, you two have, are like uh, way we, far ahead of Keith. So yeah, we, we we're going to talk about it next week anyway. We just have to eventually <laughs> acknowledge uh, space telescope and Quarian arc. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Problems. Yeah. All right. We, we can talk in. about that. Okay. okay so uh, so actually, a couple of things. So. Uh, Bird and I are going through Dark Souls 1. Uh, this will be relevant. And oh, you're going to go on this story? <laughs> uh, All right. It's, mm -hmm. it's been Seed fairly planted. functional. But we uh, we picked up a griefer recently, which was um, frustrating. Yeah, he was a PvPer that was stream sniping us, so he knew exactly when we were streaming, and where we were, and stuff like that. And he stole the username of one of your viewers. Yeah, and he was masquerading yeah. as viewers, so we were getting particularly <laughs> angry at one yeah, fan. Yeah, we, we yelled at a fan, kind of. And then yeah. they just sent me a message being like, well, they didn't send me a message. They were just like, what are you talking about? Like, they weren't even yeah, I don't even computer. own this game. Double yeah, plot so yeah, really is them. That would be funny. This, I looked this person up later on, and um, and yeah, they they had actually had several different aliases, which were just fan names. And I was just like, that is the shittiest thing you can do, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so they just watched your stream, took a number of people's names. Yep, and yeah, in the chat list. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, they, they might, were they might be a real audience member regardless. Uh no. I had never seen this person before. Yeah. We, and I mean, they, they played have, like hundreds like a, of hours of Dark Souls, so Yeah. If it was them. a real audience member, I commend them because they didn't show up until <laughs> Anne Orlando. So that would that like would take some timing and effort that anyway, most people yeah. wouldn't put into. But yeah, so this guy was uh invading he would invade me as Bird was about to summon me or invade Bird mm -hmm. as Bird was trying to summon me, and we we're having like issues connecting and stuff like that. Because even with our like hack job mod that we've got put together, it still doesn't work perfectly. And so it was, it was a Dark frustration. Souls. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. Dark Souls. Um, and so, uh, so ultimately, we switched it was to playing Tukadin because we got yeah. derailed on our Dark Souls series. Yeah, we, we got frustrated at it, so we we decided to look up new games and uh, Tukadin, Tukadin Two, uh, Tokiden. I don't know. Oh, you. T O U K I D E N. Mm -hmm. Um, but so it's a it's a PC monster hunter like you know based on Japanese uh, mythology more or less. Tecmo which, Koei. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it's actually a pretty good port, all things considered, and we were kind of okay with it. Except for it is turns it? out the whole like co op thing is kind of a lie. Really, they just send you into a boss I arena. The Tuikinen ports were like really famously awful. Uh, the first one was kind of bad. It wasn't oh, terrible, right. but the second we're, one we're getting. From, we're getting to the to the hits, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keith. Just like, hang it, on to your butt. It functioned. It looked nice. It played well, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, their lobby system makes uh, Dark Souls connectivity look uh, like you know a totally yeah. functional, like functional, reasonable system, mm. um, which was special, and just you know so on and so forth. So okay, so we finally managed to connect to each other after like maybe 20, 20 minutes of just failures, um. And so Bird gets in, and then Bird's like, hey, we did it. And I hear Bird twice. <laughs> yeah, we had a perma echo. <laughs> we had a perma echo. There were no mm -hmm. voice options in the game. There was no way to change what microphone it was using. It was just using whatever microphone it could find at the time. And uh, screw it you if you want to change any settings. Voice we, chat, no matter what. We, we muted the game. We muted the game. We muted through. Steam. We muted everything apart from TeamSpeak. Did it have a separate channel for it then? It, it no. Had what it does is it interfaces directly with like the your sound hardware to yeah. play through. It that it bypasses nefarious. Windows entirely. It's not nefarious. It's just terrible. It's just <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Incredibly annoying. Yeah. Yeah. For so our purposes. That was yes. uh that was an instant return on our part. Uh, yeah, but we both returned it. Instantly. It was such a frustrating <laughs> thing because like originally it was just going to be kind of like a Xenoverse where like you mm -hmm. can't do plot stuff with with friends it's just kind of like a side thing uh as a like multiplayer yeah. but whatever you know that I'm... being said the character creator was, was worth magic. it it was <laughs> it made it made that night like 
So we were kind of pissed off. And then over the next like day or two, I just heard so many people give glowing feedback about how funny it was because of <laughs> our horrible characters that we made. <laughs> Wander Which here, he made he made Clude Stroof. Yeah. He made like a knockoff I, oh cloud no. strife. It was awesome. I, I, I found they they just had like Vegeta's hair and Cloud Strife's mm -hmm. hair and a couple other like famous characters. Like you could kind of recreate them, but mm -hmm. then I made his face look stupid and gave him like mutton chops and stuff, <laughs> yep. which was magic. My character was Toofy Lockhard, who uh, <laughs> I made her like really short with really long legs though, and the mm -hmm. biggest boobs. Like, I cranked the boob slider to max. The game is a boob slider. I yeah, cranked yeah. it to max. And she was more like princess back problems. Like, question, they were question. enormous. Yep. Uh, in the character creator, when you had the ability to, like, did you have the ability to turn or pivot the character while you were looking at them? Oh, did they have jiggle physics? Did they have the jiggle physics in place? Oh, oh, yes. In fact... <laughs> if you ran with her, it was very clear she was not wearing a brassiere because no, no, but I mean, in the character was, creation. I don't know about the character creation, but her run animation was just like blah 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 blah. Because I remember when I wanted to try out Aeon uh, uh -huh. in the character creation. Dude, regardless someday of how we should install that game were. just so we can just so yeah. we can like yeah we need appreciate to appreciate how <laughs> just spinning the character, character around creator. in the character Aeon creator. Aeon was my they would first ever jiggle. let's play game. Really? Really? We're talking about and? the MMORPG from like yeah, Korea yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I uploaded a video of myself making a character and an up I uploaded a video of me playing or playing like some random zone for like 20 minutes and that was like my first ever like me doing a gameplay video thing on my channel. I'm, I'm just picturing what a young Keith would be like. Like, hi everyone. Very gone. <laughs> We're gonna play Aeon. <laughs> this is this is a fun cool game. I don't think game. I was talking actually. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> okay. Did it you was even just a video? Like, the concept was foreign to me. Did you choose to play the angelic ones or the uh, Asmodi? Or, what are they called? I forget what the oh, other God, races, but they're like, they're so not at this get point. Into, let's not get into this. The game's like seven years like old now. So the details are lost. With every game. There were the dark and the light ones, and the dark ones oh, no. had really cool <laughs> color happening? options. Yep. Because <laughs> you could be purple or green or blue. Fun. Sorry. This character creator looks like it's pretty good. Well, you, oh, uh, God, you can make some horrendous monsters in Aeon. Uh-huh. Holy crap. But yeah, but, so you're saying that there was jiggle physics when you made the characters turn? Yes. Well, I mean, that, so that's useful, right? Like, extra <laughs> extra information when... I mean, there are probably some people was, that, like, want to know, like, the angle of the bounce and, you know... <laughs> well, stuff. the thing was, like, when you spin of... the characters, the, the clothing and the hair also moves, you know, swishy swish. But well, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't imagine you just like, too. like her hair stayed static and her boobs were like, <laughs> <laughs> like a really bad dead or alive extreme beach volleyball situation. It reminds me of the really weird detail of dead or alive four, where there was a, there was a slider that controlled a jiggle physics in the game, but it was what? a secret, but it was secret. Okay. Uh, in the settings menu, one of the options was age and you would pick an age between like 18 and 99. And the, oh, the, but if you were 99, uh, come you, on. And it, it didn't even say, like, it, it was, like, you would assume it meant, like, what your age is or, is or something like that. Like, it doesn't it even say the what the age. It was the boob age? It, it just led to the, it was just a, it was just a weird, like, like misleadingly labeled, like, jiggle physics so, intensity slider, basically. when you get up to 99, was it, like, sagging or was it? Yeah, does no. It, does that make no, it, like, extra no, jiggly it's not or, like, sagging. completely it's just, static? It's not, it's not, it's not a... It wasn't sagging or anything. It was just a further exaggeration of like the like waterbed jiggle physics they have in the in the DOA games. Oh man! It, it was well, like an that's... intensity slider that was just mislabeled as something completely other than that. Okay. Were they trying to avoid criticism, or I don't was know. it a joke? Or I don't know. Huh. <laughs> I've I've always All thought I know is that, that like really the dead hard... or alive jiggle physics was the over the top. Oh, man. All I know is it gets really <laughs> it hard so to, to convince people that you play that game because it's fun. <laughs> was it fun? I love yeah, Dead or really? Alive. It's really fun. Oh, Dead or Alive. Sorry, I thought you were talking yeah. about I I Aeon. No, oh. Dead or Alive 4 and 5 and 2 and 3. Wait, well, yeah, I've had, they're good I, fighting I played games. four of them. Yeah, they're, really, sure. they're really fun. 
Because they're, mm-hmm. like, they're, the, they're in the vein of uh, Soul Calibur, where the environment matters around you, but more so because it's a complex environment mm-hmm. instead of a square. And so you're like actually strafing around and, and like manipulating things mm-hmm. and like trying to knock people off ledges or like countering their attacks mm-hmm. when they try to recover. And like it's a weird midpoint between what you'd expect from like a Soul Calibur versus like a Smash Brothers. So it's like it's a fun casual fighting game. Because mm. as far as I can tell, it's, when it comes to tournament stuff, like it doesn't, it's supposed to, it supposedly isn't a franchise that holds up very well, but it's real mm. fun. It's real fun. <laughs> but I got too good at it and no one would play with it me any, anymore. So then uh, I phased out and that's my history that's with that series. That, that happens with fighting games constantly. Mm. Yeah. You you really have to find people that are like, okay with On you. Par. People often mm-hmm. ask if we're going to ever play like Brawlhalla and I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> Because one of us is invariably going to break out in skill, and then it's going to become incredibly unfun for the rest of us. Yeah, that's that's one of the perks of stupid multiplayer party game things is that there is that people are not inherently going to try to get that good at them, and that's so like. Mm-hmm. Well, it's or a even if they the... do get good, they just start dicking around. Yeah, like, uh, or yeah, Mario or, party. or like random like Mario Party, where it's like basically random chance that you win anyway. There's just a thing where the skill the skill ceiling can be disappointingly low for some games, but oftentimes those games are the ones that you can actually play with your friends for more than a, a few times. Like, True. I got Mario too good Kart. at Dead or Alive to play with anybody I know. I got too good at Soul Calibur to play with anybody I know, and everyone else got way too good at Smash Brothers for me to ever even fight them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't play Smash Brothers nowadays. Nobody, you play Smash I, Brothers I with somebody good. Anyone. You're like, I'm gonna punch you, and I've lost. Yeah, I like, don't know I, how I this loved, happened. I loved Melee when I was like half this age, but nowadays mm-hmm. I played like Smash Brothers twenty whatever version for the Wii U, and like I can't hit people. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It's like mm-hmm. I'm gonna punch you, and you activated a shield and dashed behind me and used iframes yeah. and rolled. And, and, the, and the metas evolved in ways like we're like it went from me not even knowing the word meta to there being like a, a evolved meta for that game. And now it's like you they you look at certain types of players certain ways, and it's like oh you're a sword player. I'm like it's just a, I thought it was just another character type. I don't understand what the pro, what the stigma is. And it's like uh, no. <laughs> well, there are always different tiered characters, unfortunately. But yeah, it's, it, it's been interesting because I, I, in the unfairment, our little people playing randomly selected games tournament we did for sad games a long time ago. Like I, we had a three way tiebreaker because we just needed to end it, and people kept tying. Mm-hmm. Is three of us in free for all in a Smash Brothers melee, and I completely cleaned house. And it wasn't mm-hmm. even fair. And that was just a few years ago. And now I can't even play the game against those exact people. <laughs> like the, the it's 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 a, it's a real struggle when you just want to have fun with these games. Just how completely out of mm-hmm. whack the uh, the curve of people's skills can be for each one. To it make would the, be to make nice if developers what? made some kind of like uh, actual adaptive handicap as opposed to like just kind of like you do slightly mm-hmm. less damage. And it's like that's not really useful. Yeah. I mean, is there a way to I mean, I know that there are preferred characters. What if the more skilled player plays a character that they never do? Or is That's actually usually a good way to balance things. It yeah. helps, but it, it's still it, it, it's a stopgap until you get too good even then. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I got so good at Dead or Alive, I would fight people with a random button. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. No matter oh, I'm playing as the giant wrestler man, fine, I'll figure it out. And then I just cream them. I'm like, oh, I don't know what his moves are, but I won. <laughs> <laughs> and no matter what my brother did, whenever we played uh, Smash Brothers together, he would kick my ass. Well, yeah. and, mm-hmm. in Smash Brothers, there's only a couple of moves that really define characters, and most of the other ones are just well, the Well, no, the characters right, definitely right, move evasion, differently. Like shields. Oh, yeah, but, like their jumps are different. There's a lot yeah, of weird quirks to keep track different. of. Like how Little uh, Mac they're... has zero air game, or how Martha yeah. can't recover horizontally when he goes off oh, the Kirby? screen and stuff like that. Kirby Puffs? Kirby yeah. Like, yeah, Kirby, one, Kirby, yeah. Kirby's horrifyingly light. Like there's mm-hmm. so, there's all these little quirks you have to keep track of that affect your play style, but it's a nightmare yeah. to keep track of sometimes. But yeah, okay, like this is uh, why none of us will play Smite with Spider, and why yeah. playing uh, mm-hmm. uh, Awesome Knots versus Blitzkriegler was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's because some people are so uh, good at certain games that they can't play <laughs> with people anymore. Uh, especially mm-hmm. because our like um, our reactions to competitive games also don't work. Like. Uh, you know, you were trying to have fun, whereas Bird and I were trying to take it kind of seriously. So when you did things that came off as like completely inane to us and we we're like trying to teach you how, how it goes, 
it, like it was it just frustrated everybody yeah that was being nobody... a fun sniper man <laughs> well what really bothered me was that was my favorite character and you were playing it and you were playing it bad and i was like no just let me play it i want to play with i want to play rylan but you didn't let me okay can we quick cut i gotta try and switch something like this obs regular is using up uh 60 so, like, percent of my countdown? cpu and that's yeah no yeah good. okay yeah, uh, so we're just going to do a 3, 2, one cut. Two, I'm going to switch one. it. Very good. All right. Technical problems are the best. Oh, gee. So, uh, do we want to lead off with the question, seeing as we broke all flow of uh, what <laughs> yeah, we're talking about? Now that we've ruined that everything, good. let's talk about yeah. the Corian initiative. Uh, mm. Let's see. We don't really have questions. Really? It's not, really? Okay. Not any I, left over from... So, um... I, we, did we no. respond to the is the bird catcher persona a uh, something made up? Did like we already I don't remember. Did, we actually, that. did we talk about that? Yeah, I, uh, I, I think we gave a kind of a glide response, but yeah. we can talk about that and then you well, know this, this everyone question, can answer their own experiences, I guess. I've got a question that you guys might be able to answer, but I don't know if I have anything for it necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, Max Damage asks if you could save any game from early access hell, what would you choose and why? Mm. There, I don't know. One, I would say the the first one that leaps to my mind is towns, just because that was a huge disappointment. Yeah, like what is the um, context of this? Like, are we going to magically fix something that is in early access to just make it or um, magically what was get completed, that that, or what? Or uh, what was the one that came out right after uh, Cube World? You know, that one. I feel like that um, was kind of a victim of its own success for sure. Uh and I like that game, and okay, I wish so, that it did. Do we want to? Do we want to add like um, well, qualifiers Divinity. to this? I, I can't wait to play Divinity. With yeah, you but guys. that'll that's not early access hell. That's, What's early access no. hell? Then? It's when a game is perpetually in development. Well, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Divinity's just a normal early access, and it'll have a nice normal release when it comes out because it's just Divinity, and it'll be great. Yeah. So you're talking about games that are stuck in it forever. Yeah. Okay. When yeah. early access goes wrong. Oh, I was going to nominate a game, and it's actually been removed forever off of Steam, so I guess that's that. Which one? Dungeon Which Dashers. One? <laughs> what failed? Oh, oh yeah. Really? I just wanna, Dungeon Dashers is I off. Just, I just want to flip mm -hmm. a switch and have Dungeon Dashers be a complete game that was finished, because <laughs> those first ten levels mm -hmm. or something, I'm like, I like this game, this is cool, and then it never happened. Yeah, <laughs> I actually picked and that up it's gone. with the Express it's just gone off purpose. Steam. That they'd... was like me with EverQuest Next. I was so oh. happy with the lore. And the story they are putting out, like, mini novellas mm -hmm. and stuff. I was reading it. I'm like, woohoo, this is going to be cool. And mm -hmm. then, no. This is weird to think that now I have a, I permanently have a game on my account that nobody else can have. I know. That's I weird. actually bought that game so we could play multiplayer when that got added. And yeah. then, ha ha. That was a yeah. fun game. I have Codename Freeman but installed. But the rest of the game to come out. Because I know if I ever uninstall it, I'll never be able to install it again. <laughs> oh. Like, um, PT. Can I, res uh, yeah. can I save PT from early access hell? <laughs> no. Yeah, like, all the, the qualifier questions I have are like, would it be like, the game would realize every single promise that they made? Mm -hmm. or are, you like, are you about to say No Man's Sky? No, actually, I'm pretty happy with where No Man's Sky is going with itself. Like, I'd, mm -hmm. it's going to be an early access for a while, but it's not early access hell. But Cube World would rank really high up there. Yes. Uh, jokingly, I was going to say stuff like Magisite. Um, uh, but I think... Uh, <laughs> do you really want to rescue that one? Magicite <laughs> no. does not have potential to realize. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, the, the developer... Well, but... The developer actually just put out a mobile game that looks nice that I will never play. I've been burned too much by that specific developer. And yeah. then I've been burned once. But it was well, a we... really bad burn. Rogue Lands was pretty good, but, like, he absolutely needed to have, like, actually... Handed handed Roguelands out to anybody that owned Magicite as an apology. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that that was the game that like burnt me on early access. Though there are a couple Here's other a ones. Like, uh, yeah, there's a minor yep. aside. Have you ever gotten a question? Have you ever gotten a video game as an apology? Uh, apology. Oh, loud ass dog. Well, would it be for? Uh, you've probably had instances. Carl, where you've um, at requested a game, you didn't receive it, you purchased it, and then they give it to you after Well, yeah, the fact. I, I've gotten it, like, after the fact. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, uh, 
I got a bunch of emails from a developer, se several developers this past month specifically, where like their game is coming to a different platform and I covered it on launch. And they're mm -hmm. like, please cover our game. Like, you know, we love your content and stuff like that, but they made no reference to the fact that I've either done a full or partial series on their game. And I'm just like, oh yeah, we love your content. Uh, I, I YouTuber keep getting 24. PR emails about like, wow, Anima's, Anima Gate of Memories is getting a, a, yeah. a full disc uh -huh. release on PS4, and I'm like, fuck off. I said they're charging like 50 bucks for that, and I was just like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> that game's not okay. Yeah, it, Not it, okay, it's the worst game I played in 2016, and it's price yeah. is going up. <laughs> I, I did a double take on that one, because I was like, wait, didn't Keith play it, and it was like, atrocious? Yes. But... Mm -hmm. That's published by Nipponichi Software. I don't- their, like, PR thing is, like, so weird and dumb magic that, mm -hmm. like, I don't even question- I don't even question, like, how their business works, it just does. They're, uh, they are the- oh shoot, Black Shell Media of, uh, Japanese game uh -huh. releases, as far as I'm concerned. Sorry, uh, I ran I your just, cat over. Here's a copy of Assassin's I, I was, Creed. <laughs> I was just leading in because I got I got a I got a copy of Dead Space Three as a mm -hmm. as a, an apology for SimCity 2013. Oh, oh wait. right. What? How are they what? related? Because they're both um, EA Sim games, maker? and it was yeah, a massive made by EA. mistake. Yeah, SimCity 2013 was a complete travesty. Yeah, and so they gave people that was free the games for that. that. I forgot about that. God, I haven't thought about the game in for ages. It didn't have like really, yep. really awful like online problems, and it had problems like with the traffic system that they put into the game. And yeah. so it was an always online game, despite being a single player game where you only would kind of play adjacent to other people. But it might affect like the local pollution and crime rates a little bit, and well, the economy a bit, and that's about it. I know it. you could sell like power to people. And it's like <laughs> the cell, like affect only crime rate of. neighboring cities. So if you were a jerk, I, oh, hey, you just someone, ship I, off I just all your criminals. I just remember <laughs> playing that game with uh, with uh, some people in my frat, and one of the guys was like selling cheap power to everybody, and then one day blew up all of his power plants. Yeah, uh, effectively screwing everybody else over. It was oh, super yeah. funny. If you don't join, that is if you don't, funny. if you don't inherent uh, intentionally join friends. In a specific location from the get-go, you are put with random people on the internet, all of any of which could quit at any moment and just leave their high pollution city sitting there forever. And time doesn't Aww. even pass when they're not even playing in those cities. Like, and so eventually you can't even, they just you can't even get like, run to the ground. Yeah, like you can't yeah. even like offload your police force towards them to deal with their crime rate or anything because if they're not playing, then time never passes in their city forever, uh. <laughs> and it's in a constant state of shittiness. Period. And stuff like that. But also it had a really nightmare system where they bragged that supposedly all of the different people uh, like had their own home and own place they worked. And like that is everybody was going out about their daily routine like it was a Bethesda game or something. But mm -hmm. instead what happened is that there was just a bunch of places that were homes for people and a bunch of places that were work for people. And every single person would come from the closest house and run to the, the nearest business they could work at and they would drive in a, the shortest possible path there and if you made a giant like you, you could make a giant grid of roads that was your massive city area and, and they would use one yeah they'd all use one road basically <laughs> and be surrounded by open paths and then you're and and also they didn't they wouldn't clear the road for emergency vehicles so this mm -hmm. nightmare traffic that shouldn't exist would also be stopping people from like stop from like firefighters getting to burning buildings and stuff like that and like it was just ah. the game was a travesty like people would create tests where they would create like they would create a beautiful, like, six-lane road going through an area, and then then cut or cut around one of its corners with a tiny, tiny dirt road for like one. And square. everyone went on the dirt road. Everyone oh, took the dirt road. Oh, it was that. I remember that. It was a nightmare. I remember that system. I put a wow. dock on a on a store line, and then the, the and then the uh, the local geog geology just grew up around it, and it was no longer Jeez. on the shore. The moment I Man, placed that's it. like <laughs> that's like problems that you expect to happen in games that are like. 10, 15 years old, yeah. not 2013. Instead, no like, that game one of those cases where the newest entry in the game. Actually, <laughs> actually, I think what got them there was they were trying to create complexity, and the complexity well, actually... But, like, 
any any level of QA would have shown that immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, it's one of those games. It probably did. did. They probably just didn't yeah. give a shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's one of those many many cases where you, there's no excuse because you absolutely know a game went out with problems everyone knew about and they knew it was going to be a big problem and they shipped it anyway, and mm -hmm. you can point blame here and there about who's responsible for it, but at the end of the day, it's still like people knew this was a bad product and they put it out on purpose. Like that happened. You can. Bl it like, always can bugs me when a game like comes out. And mm -hmm. people are like, how did QA not catch this? I'm sitting there being like, don't blame <laughs> QA, did. they caught it. No, they I'm, absolutely yeah. <laughs> did. I learned a lot from mm -hmm. listening to best friends, uh, super best friends, uh, do their playthrough of uh, Deus Ex uh, Human Revolution, which they did one of QA them for. Did the, both of them or just I think one it was them? both of them. <laughs> Wow, and, the, and they because I think they met in QA at that company in the first place or something, and they were talking about like how like yeah they would just find new problems and they would like forward it forward and people would just be mad at them for even forwarding the problem in the first place and stuff That's like that. That's because if they tried well, fixing yeah, it, the, it would ruin everything uh, else. The actual developers blame them for giving them more work when in yep. reality, mm -hmm. and, and they like even had these fun moments of like Let, let's see if this is still here and it's still there, <laughs> like uh... the, like memory lane through their old job. <laughs> Yeah, QA gets ignored a lot, especially in a lot of AAA games, because the games are supposed to come out on a schedule, they're supposed to cost this much money to make, and, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if that makes the game shittier. Yeah. But there's too yeah. many people with too much control that don't care about that part. Yep. And now, that's why we it... get what we get. Yay, Andromeda! With strike it... teams. Did this ever <laughs> occur with a film? Was there ever, like, a film it in recent it history? Just oh, where... yeah. It just yeah. happened but... with Iron Fist. Mm -hmm. Iron Fist? Well, Iron that's Fist a television is a show, right? Yeah, but that, the difference is literally non-existent between a show okay, and, so a, and, a, and a movie, really. Okay, so it's the Netflix one I've heard is dismal. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that this game was, was rushed... I said game again. This show was <laughs> rushed out because it was on a schedule. It had to come out mm -hmm. before Defenders comes out. Like, because mm -hmm. because Iron Fist is going to be in the Defenders. So uh... they rushed out this show, which is one of the most complex premises for a show they've done so far. Because it has... It's supposed to be an entire cast of, like, martial arts experts, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. But like they, every single character would have like, the like the main the main actor had a few weeks to train and that's it. And every time they do mm -hmm. a scene, like they mm -hmm. like they supposedly did the choreography, like they practice the choreography for like fifteen minutes before the scene, and that's like it basically. Oh. And it's like it's a nightmare of like we we have to do this on a timetable, so it doesn't matter if it's good; it just needs to be done. And that's so, like the most depressing reason. This is for like to be Power done. Rangers martial arts acting. Oh yeah, <laughs> and the game I the, heard that the, the whole show is. Was worse. The show is so jam-packed with terrible, terrible, terrible plot, like, weird plot holes and weird nonsensical mm -hmm. character behavior and just frustrating, and frustrating of course, protagonist. You know, the editors figure this out because they're the ones that, like, they look through the whole thing, chop yep. it all together, and they're like, here it is. But they're like, we it need comes to out reshoot next month, XYZ, and they filming it. WQ, and it's mm -hmm. like, nope, that's the one. It's just like... <laughs> To, to give minor spoilers for some really dumb things that happen early on, like, he comes back and he's like, mm. I'm the Iron Fist. I'm, t I'm from Kunlun and stuff like that. And everyone's like, what the fuck is this guy? Uh, uh, so he gets thrown into a, a sane asylum immediately mm -hmm. in the show. And he he's, keeps talking to this, his doctor every day because he supposedly has 72 hours for them to figure this stuff out as far as, like, whether uh -huh. or not he's going to be, like, well, yeah, it's permanent a 3D or holes. not. Yeah. Oh, the 3D yeah, hole for the asylum. And it's common. Yeah, so the guy is like, you know what? I believe you. You are Danny Rand. You're not some lunatic that thinks he's Danny Rand, this kid that's been dead for 15 years. Oh. Uh, and right mm. when he's believing him uh, about the truth, Danny is immediately like, I'm from another dimension. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing, <laughs> Danny? You're about to get out. And you're and, and then, like, shortly after that, like, he gets taken in because he, he, he still doesn't have his own company and everything, so he gets taken into this place where he can be, uh, like, he can stay at a dojo, like, overnight and stuff like mm -hmm. that. He's gonna be staying there for a week. And this lady's just like, whatever, just whatever you do, stay away from the classes, don't mess with the students. Immediately, he walks in on one of the classes in, like, the next scene and assaults a student. And I'm like, what are you doing, protagonist of superhero show? And How did he assault the student? Did the, did the student provoke him, or what happened? So he came into the middle of the class, took charge of the entire class, completely superseding any authority he should have had, and then he starts doing, giving rants and doing weird poses and stuff, and everyone's like, what's happening here? And one guy laughs for a little... Basically, a guy laughs for a moment, and he, like... He just, like, slams he him down to the ground. I'm like, what are you doing, Danny? Go away! 
You're not supposed to be here, Wherever. and you're, you're attacking students. Oh, wait. I, unfortunately, my only experience this with Iron Fist This sounds more like is... angry martial arts grandpa than, like, <laughs> Iron Fist. It's, it's so, like, really weird. It's well, really weird to watch. My experience with him was in, like, one side series. You know when they do the crossovers between comics? So I have yeah. all of Rom Space Knight and mm -hmm. Iron Fist and Power Man. Which Isn't it that Luke Cage's yeah. other name? Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm. They help him out with a hospital or something, and that that and I I found that he was like a wisecracker. Yeah. It was well, funny. yeah. The weird part is like Iron Fist is supposed to be kind of, you know, Spider Man ish, but like more mature. Mm -hmm. So like makes jokes, but knows what he's doing. This doesn't sound like uh, Iron Fist at all. This sounds like. Well, my question is what what happened to him in this other dimension where he was trained. Did they, were they really disciplinary? He was trained as a guardian of Kun Lun for 15 years, and he's the Iron Fist, and he can focus his chi into a glowy fist and punch things, is more or less the short of it. I thought this was funny, when I took a Tai Chi class, and our, the series, our teacher was, was <laughs> telling us about chi, and he's like, here, you can channel it into your hands, and you can feel it. Like, so he was instructing, so my friend and I, we were supposed to wave our hands in front of each other without touching. And I'm uh -huh. like, oh, I wonder can, if I do that. Can you do this on, on camera? Because I want to <laughs> okay, watch so this. It's like this. <laughs> okay, and, but you hang don't, on. You don't touch. Now, the you thing can't. Is, it's, I'm not streaming my face Aww. cam. Yeah, Sorry, man. Okay, now the thing is, for years, I had always found it fun to, like, slightly tense my hands and fingers so that they turn bright red and feel really hot. Can you guys do that? Have you ever tried to do that? I'm trying right now. All right, all right, but don't put too much don't force into it. Yourself, you, have, you have to sort of like <laughs> feel. You have to actually like feel your palms. I'm like, feeling the crap out of them. So people okay. think uh, blood circulation is smearing the poop on your palms. <laughs> like really, it's like I bend mine backwards and I tense my fingers, and suddenly your palms start getting really hot and sometimes blotchy and red. And then webs start flinging out. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I I did that, and my friend was like. Wow, like they do feel really warm, and I'm a couple inches away from you. And my teacher comes over, and he's trying to like feel our chi, and he goes, "Oh, you have strong <laughs> chi." I'm like, "It's blood flow. I'm pretty sure it's blood flow." But I was, I was keeping that to myself. But yeah, is it supposed That's to? That's funny it, as hell. <laughs> is it supposed to be pronounced key? Uh, I, you know, I've never actually well, heard the thing is, there's a proper. Key, which is ki, and then there's chi. Which yeah, is see, that's the problem. It's the same thing. I keep hearing. But I've them, never heard I keep the official word. Actually the same thing though. There's a character in Dragon Ball Z with a name that's kind of like that. How do people pronounce her name? Then it's chi. <laughs> no, it's not. A, she doesn't run a delivery service, you jackass. <laughs> delivery. <laughs> Keith I wouldn't worry about it, Keith. I don't understand what's going on. No, no, it's fine. I'm making it's another so joke for one audience. I'm it's derailing it right now. It's issues between romanization and the Japanese language and shit like that. But yeah. Anyway. Uh, so that's so, my experience with Chi. So, uh, uh, so Iron Fist is bad. And that's mm -hmm. weird. Uh, some cool stuff has happened like eight episodes in, so it might somewhat redeem itself but man like every fight scene uh, something's it, not redeemed by eight ep eight episodes in it's yeah, not happening like, there's a lot of uh like the fight scenes look look, look like they're it looks like you're watching somebody's well, how would i put it like it'd be like as if you were watching a kung fu movie in the theater like uh rocky horror picture show style and there's people up on the stage in front of the screen and they're doing the kung fu moves and that's what the movie is is those people <laughs> Is the reenactment oh. on the stage in front of the movie? Is it feels like that's the people you're watching instead of a real kung fu movie? That's mm. odd. Because <laughs> like it's just it's like everyone looks like they're going too slow and too awkward, and a lot of like a lot of the moves don't look like they have force behind them, and they look like they're just pretend kung fuing for the whole mm -hmm. show. The only real highlight so far has been that there's a really cool, there's a fun moment where they where they shoehorn in like a drunken master character. I'm like this is always fun, and it and it, 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 <laughs> proved, and it proved it to be fun like it always is. I'm like yeah, Brad Wong, go in there. <laughs> but yeah, I would recommend watching literally any other Marvel Netflix show first. Or Legion. Mm -hmm. Legion's really good and interesting. <laughs> it took me a while to remember who Legion was. Nobody knows who Legion is for the most part. Well, he's I he's Xavier's know. son. Yeah, it, it took it took me a bit to remember that I, because with whom? the comics dump all over him so often that it's with just whom like. With did Xavier have a son? 
Uh, huh. Well, I mean, if you're going with it's the extended universe, child. multiple people. Ga- Wait, Gabrielle Haller, apparently, yeah, I who, I don't if, remember I, her. if I look at this picture, is clearly of, like, a, a dude... With long hair, so that's confusing. <laughs> in the in the eighties, they always drew very square jaws, but uh, I I don't know about this one. Really? Uh, what what what, what do you is, is it that the artist from? that hides feet? Uh, no, it's not Lee. Um, whatever his name is, Lee Field. Yeah, Rob Liefeld. Rob yeah. Liefeld. <laughs> I I mean, yeah, she's got a pretty square jaw, but I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play a game where you play as it's, it's a multiplayer game where mm-hmm. one one person plays as Rob Liefeld and one person plays as the visual designer of like Final Fantasy ten through thirteen, and they fight over they fight over belt versus uh, pouch space on a character model. Oh, dude, that is the most specific joke I think I've ever heard you make. It's <laughs> I get pretty it, great. But there was like nine references packed That's into the most that specific sentence. one you've gotten. <laughs> Valid, oh, dude. Valid point. It would it would look it would look like uh, Lulu from Final Fantasy X, except for instead of boobs, it's pouches. <laughs> instead of person, it's pouches. <laughs> Her skin is pouches. Her dolls are pouches. What the hell Pretty was much. up with Lulu anyway? I like, don't know. But no dress other character in Final Fantasy in Final Fantasy X's universe looked anything like her. She didn't even match like the village she came from. No, she's, from the master, right? she's from a beach village. She's got like a fur dress and like and like like goth belts. makeup. She's like her her skirt is made up of a thousand belts. The funny yeah. thing is, Lulu Which, almost makes perfect sense from a visual design perspective, ignoring her location of origin, until yes. you get to the belts. Yeah, that's a, she's that's a just fair wear, point. She's just yep. wearing, like, a, a, a dress, but she's just wearing a normal black dress with, like, lacy things on the edges of them and, like, a really furry, mm-hmm. like, top part of it. Her hair just has sticks in it. Like, it's really straightforward. Then out of mm-hmm. nowhere, the entire front of the dress is cut off. And you, it's revealed that she has a dress made of belts also under the mm-hmm. dress. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I like that her victory dance in Final Fantasy X was literally just to lean over and show off her cleavage, too. <laughs> I yeah, forgot that, that that was her. That was, like, why? They didn't even match her character. No. Like, she think, wasn't, like, hoey. But... I think what happens is she was finishing, she was finishing the fight, and then at, that was just when the corset finally gives out. And her back support <laughs> or falls. She's just got like a lot of back problems. She's just yeah. like t- catches a breather, like, like oh, without shit. without without the corset laced up, like her back just mm-hmm. gives out <laughs> and she just collapses forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the oh, art Lulu. design in that game, I it, it was great and then nonsense. It was like a 50-50 split between characters place. that made perfect sense and no sense. Yeah, like that. Like, game I will had... never understand Titus's shorts. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, like, Titus's like, whole Luna. outfit. Hey. Titus's whole outfit was if like bad. kind of a prototype for uh, Sora in Kingdom Hearts. If you're speaking exactly. about bad mm-hmm. shorts, look at the new Xenoblade protagonist. Shorts. Oh, dude, mm-hmm. the, the Xenoblade the, uh... Chronicles two character makes no sense visually. Now the mm-hmm. uh, the pr- the predecessor for Sora from Kingdom Hearts is bou- is the bouncer uh, Sion Barthazard. Yeah, I know you're right, he, but he's like the same character. Really? Hold yeah. on. Yeah, I played the bouncer. Yeah, Sion is just Sora. Like you can but look up like, comparisons where it's like, look, it's the same clothes, but but Sora has clown shoes. <laughs> but like the weird thing about the visual design of Final Fantasy X was that like for every Lulu. Or Holy shit, Titus, was the exact there was same. a Yuna or an Orin that made complete sense to look at. And yeah. that's why it was so confusing to look at everybody, because it was like a 50-50 split between characters were like, oh yeah, I get it, and characters were like, what happened? <laughs> In the same <laughs> cast. I like the environment design wow. in Final Fantasy X. They kind of missed the... Whomever was in charge of their, like, environmental design, they must have fired mm-hmm. him after 12, because, like... Uh, 13 was kind of... I guess it was kind of sci-fi, but, like, the time you mm-hmm. hit 15, it's just, like, there's one city that kind of looks like Final Fantasy X's, like, wonderful mm-hmm. visual style, and everything else is just, like, Nevada! <laughs> one thing that always confused me about Final Fantasy style is the fact that, I mean, there's... Uh, asymmetry is fine, 
but there's so much of it. I'm just trying to imagine waking up in the morning and going, I'm going to wear this thigh length <laughs> sock, but my yeah. other sock is going to be ankle length. And then I'm going to have I a skirt, put... but half the skirt's going to have a scarf around it. And then <laughs> right, I need to put on this handkerchief, on but only on my belts. left pocket. Four <laughs> belts, one leg. Yeah, how, how many drawers do they have? <laughs> <laughs> this is my left uh, outfit. Drawer, drawer, chest of drawers, and this I, is my I right. I you said it made sense in Bersaria, Keith, but I can't get past what's mm -hmm. her face's like outfit. She just looks like what velvet? Uh, the main character. Yeah, cause I've she's never got, like, said a... it made sense. Oh, I, I her thought you, you had... bullshit. <laughs> okay, I thought you had made the argument that like her her outfit no. was sensible. Okay, <laughs> good. No, velvet's bullshit. Uh. So she got like a, she's got like a nice like vaguely like cowboy looking costume at the beginning of the game, and then bad mm -hmm. stuff happens, and she's in prison for a while and whatever, and then she she's escaping, literally just finds clothes. So like you see her in her like cowboy costume, all tattered up and messed up. So she just finds mm -hmm. a chest that just has clothes in it, and that's what she puts on for the rest of the game. <laughs> she gets that iconic supposed cover costume from just a random box outside of her jail cell, and it's just random people's clothes from pr presumably a bunch of different prisoners, all perfectly <laughs> torn in all the right places to make it look really intentional. And it's like, why would wow. you- Wow. Why would you- If you found leg-length stockings that are 70% absent from existence already, why would you even put them on in the first place? <laughs> It's like taking the armor from the enemy you just killed in a fantasy game. Like, yeah. it's gonna have, like, a sword hole in the middle of it. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, I'm on a Wikia. Okay. <laughs> I went onto one of those Wikia websites oh, to look at pictures of Sion Barzad, and it was uh... like, Here's the Toyota Camry, you better buy it. <laughs> like, no, I wanted to podcast. <laughs> it's fine. I'm sorry, my chat. What the hell? Oh, my God. That is... Did you wow. find velvet? Yeah. <laughs> That's it, that, how that, did uh, uh, <laughs> there really are words way of expressing like, it. Like she what, what are they looking every at? Every single every, it's like oh, every square inch has a You can't make it. sense of any part of Velvet's costume. It's just noise. Yeah, we had considered playing that and then I looked at her design. I'm going, I is don't she know if wearing, I could watch that the entire game. Is she wearing two boots? It looks like, like she's, she's of each other. Her yeah, right she did. Foot, she she did. A... She put a boot over a boot, and then she had the other large boot, <laughs> and, but no smaller boots. So she's like, I guess I put and this she on. She put three belts on as garters to on one leg, and then another garter on the other leg. That's I mean, just to hold up the at stockings. It now there's like a chain that goes across too. Mm -hmm. From it's one amazing of the belts, she spends a big which chunk makes of it the early game. Belt. She spends a big chunk of the early game like like laying low, <laughs> dressed like. Why that. does she have a belt it's attached gonna, it... to her cloak? Look at that on the right <laughs> by her hand. There's another belt. <laughs> More belts. And there's like bandages and shit. Like, <laughs> I I would probably find that out. The bandages like, are the only thing that makes sense. This in here. Wear it for like ten minutes. Get outside and be like, "All right, we are finding like a boutique." The and only I'm thing that go... the only thing that kind of makes sense is the bandages, because her arm transforms into the nightmare consuming thing. So like, normally it's just a hand mm -hmm. that's covered in bandages. Yeah, no, you're right, yeah, but it's nothing just else. Like... <laughs> I would probably just try to like find someone's cape, and I'd be like, "Hey, can you give that to me?" I'd cut a piece <sighs> out of it. And like put it over the whole chest area. She's wearing and booty make shorts. A, a longer skirt. Or She's just wearing pants like booty shorts with a laced front that's ninety percent unlaced. All the, so there's like a deep say, skin it's like, V. Yeah, it's like it's like what? It's like but they're not even booty shorts. They're like cut off. It's like but they're also she perfectly a, fitted. Yeah, it was like she got a pair of booty shorts that were torn to be more booty. And by the way, almost nothing about how she's dressed matches with her uh, personality in any way, really. <laughs> Is she like, mm -hmm. hi? No. I want to I go to no, the prom. No, isn't she really... She's mostly just of, really reserved inside. and bitchy. And well, um, I would say that her outfit kind of matches that personality. Yeah, because reserved, the number of belts sure. you wear, then the more, you know... <laughs> yeah. If usually the more darker Lulu's, your character is. If we're going <laughs> by Lulu's standards, then she is, like, perfect. I was, yeah. Her belts have reached the point of level 10 tryhard. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I wonder, somebody should try to, like, graph, like, 
the reserved or bitchy character, or bitchy nature of character to number of belts that they wear and <laughs> see if there's a correlation because I'm convinced that there is. Well, I just can't help but think that like, I actually like her cowboy costume. <laughs> Uh, because uh, how many belts was uh, Beelzemon wearing on his like leather uh, but, like, pants? That's and stuff? Digimon. Like yes, but they yeah, got kind all of, of their free character pass designs suck. Biz- <laughs> bizarre choices. Like I can understand having a, two this belts isn't a per Digimon. bracer. This is a dude. Two belts per like boot. Oh, you for, don't like, know about you don't know about class. that bird. Oh, I know that like it, all the like really really high level Digimon are just people. Yeah, yeah. Ninety mm-hmm. percent of the actual Digimon you ever see on screen at any point are either tiny tiny mascot mascot plushies or they're just action figures. <laughs> yep, <laughs> because I, they, yeah. those so, are the two things they can sell based on the show is plushies I, and action I'm, figures. Yeah. I'm still playing Digimon uh, ne- Next Order. Uh, hmm. I'm going to be streaming it later tonight. But like my personal mission is to play. To get as many non like human humanoid like where Guru Romana can kind of get behind because like whatever werewolf, but like let's get weird stuff like Ivy Sore. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's just like it's hard to find non human like high level Digimon because instead it's just nothing but these like uh, really like generic humans like kind of perfect proportion humans. Wearing weird kind of thematic armor, and I'm like, but they're not monsters anymore. They're like people dudes. Yes. Do you know how <laughs> difficult it is to cosplay as these characters? Like the this just the physics alone for some of the pieces that you have to wear. There's an angel Digimon that's like flying around, and she's got like stiletto heels. Yep, that's bad. She too. never touches the ground. Why bother? <laughs> just like, <laughs> it's been very interesting. Like, I was actually looking at a bunch of cosplay the other uh, day or two, um, Uh tying into, uh, like, some character design work that I'm doing. And I noticed that there are just some characters that are just straight up, like, impossible to cosplay. And, like, even really iconic characters. Like, I I was looking at Final Fantasy VII and I couldn't find Mm -hmm. a single Tifa Lockhart. For example, okay. So, Wait, Bert, have really? you ever Tifa's no? Been yeah, I, I've, several seen, times. I've seen I've seen Tifa find get cosplay. Her at all. Okay, so Bert, <laughs> Tifa's look up not even Kill hard to cosplay. cosplay. Look at who? She's wearing normal clothes. Kill oh, Kill all of a sudden I can find good Tifa cosplay. This is weird. I, I was going to say she's literally, literally like wearing a mini skirt, a tank top, and suspenders and a belt. Yeah, she's mad. I looked this up like two days ago, and I couldn't find a single one, and that really surprised me. Okay, so that was just a weird. It's because you search off, you dunce. What? So I, I did. Don't know about that. What do you know? <laughs> uh, but anyway, Kill the Kill has like the most like ridiculous, unrealistic cos- costumes ever, and mm. like people That's very consistently power cosplay. Is associated with how little they're wearing. That's... No, no, it's associated with their clothes. The whole like them huh. wearing nothing was purely just like dumb plot device. But it was a plot this device. This is this is. Uh, yep. wow. Yep. Hey, here's a dude yep. doing it. That's pretty funny. I know. There are a couple dudes that I love the dudes either. that wear it because it's just like, yeah, you go, dude. It's like, um, oh shit. Who's a particularly bimboish ah, character? Um, <laughs> kill the kill? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, from League of Legends, who's the, uh, who's the pirate chick? Any, do you oh, know? Oh, Miss Fortune. Uh-huh. Yeah, Miss Fortune. I saw a fat bearded dude. Dressed up in like Miss Fortune's like really really skimpy outfit, and I was just like, yeah. Uh, I mean, you've all I'd all high seen five you, Moon but you weird me out. And a couple sort other, of. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Saw a dude I've once never with heard like of Kill a Kill, but damn, these are it's actually a decent outfits. anime, but the outfit is like stupid. Um. But, it's supposed, uh, oh, I dude, it's, it's supposed to be one of those parody anime that kind of stopped being a parody at some point. I feel like they designed this character's like outfit starting at, like, the pasties and, yeah. like, just, like, worked up from there. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Uh, okay, so have any believe, questions rolled in or, or are not, we still just free-forming it? Uh, did anyone else have answers for... The question of saving a game from green light hell. Or, Holy uh, crap! Uh, that was really a while ago. Hell. I think that's where we left off. Ago. I don't know if anyone, everyone finished. Um, uh, we, I think we did. Yeah. I I, mean, some of the roguelikes that I played for a while would be fascinating to see the end results. 
Because mm -hmm. for me, it's been a lot of failed MMOs. MMOs that, like all the concept art, everything was down. They had maybe even started producing uh, like oh, in-game models and stuff. And then they just disappear. Astroneer would be a pretty good one, actually. Astroneer oh. would be really good fun once it's done. Mm. It was just really freaking broken when we were... Um, when we were trying to play it when it first launched. Like, uh, if you went to another planet with other people, they glitch out and fall through the world. And so you're locked to, like, the first planet and shit like that. I was mm -hmm. kind of no good. Oh, people are mentioning Digimon. Wasn't Kazimon? She was the one with the blue hair and the purple outfit Man, that didn't I don't make remember. sense either. Yeah. <laughs> Kazimon? I think, I think so. Uh... This is... Just a person wearing um, Jordy's visor. I like that you're guessing the spelling and it's working. By the way, wait, wait, wait. That's some lucky. That's some lucky jumps. E M O N. K A Z E. Yeah, like as in like Kaze, as in wind. Yeah, but yeah, mm. like Kaze and Effect Day. Uh, wow. We got a question for Bird. Oh, we do. Game development from Benjamin Meyer. This Hi, is primarily Benjamin. a question for Bird, but what made you decide to go back to school to become a programmer? Also, what did you use to learn as a foundation? Wow. What I used was solo learn, and I learned C+. Cool. Uh, that's an awesome question, and I'm kind of... I guess I've talked about my biography enough that you could actually piece that together, huh? Um, but I, I guess I never really told that like little linchpin. So... Um, it's a really, really, really long story about why I went back to school to go. Um, so for people who don't know, uh, what happened with me was I got my master's degree in classical music performance. And then um, the semester that I graduated, I decided to uh, immediately enroll in the computer science department uh, for the fall of that year. And um, basically, a lot of people had conversations with me in my life at really opportune times, and they said just the right things to plant this idea in my head. So um, one person told me, like, or had a conversation where he was saying, like, he went back to school to become a lawyer, and he was talking about what that process was like. And I was like, that's kind of cool that you can just, that's a thing that people can do. Was and it? And then, Yeah. Was it ever one of those things, like, I've had that conversation with my parents about going back to school, but it was always, you will never make it in art, so you have to do something else instead. Right. You, so it my, was never something re to replace music. Was it just yeah. something to build so off my of your interests? My, my, um, my teacher asked, or my voice teacher asked me, what are you going to do uh, to, like, live if, you, if this doesn't work out? And... At the time, I had actually been taking a bunch of um, online M mocks, M-O-O-Cs, things like Coursera and stuff, on programming because I was interested in picking it up as a skill. Uh, and then that's when I made the connection of, like, I should just um, do this because I had looked up how much programmers make, and I was like, I want that amount of money. I will do that. And it was a hell of a step up from being a musician anyway. So, yeah, I went and became a computer scientist based off of that, and I'm cutting out, like, 80% of the details of that story, and it's still really long. But, um, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, so I mostly did it because I didn't think I would be happy or free enough to do what I wanted to do in life with just um, trying to make it as a musician. So I went to become a programmer to um, enable that for myself. And uh, how I learned programming, I think that was the second part of the question, correct? Yes. It was, it was a little hard to decipher. But um, so I started by going on to a website called edX or Coursera, which they have a lot of classes um, on Python and introduction to programming. And I just followed along those classes, and um, I studied very, very hard at it. And uh, I also did a lot of uh, Khan Academy classes on mathematics, 
So studying calculus and things like that. Um, and then I just like made it happen for myself. It took a lot of hard work and, uh, I, um, I, w I would say that if you want to become a programmer, it really helps to be good at mathematics, uh, as a foundational skill. So if you really want to follow the exact same path that I have, I highly encourage you to bone up on mathematics, then bone up on programming. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what language, if you pick up C plus plus or C or whatever, just something to don't, get you started. I started with Java and Python. Yeah. That's what I did too much though. Cause that gets weird. Yeah. A little bit. If you start, it, it, cause then you start talking about mathematics with your friends and they're like, Haha, stop. But you were asking, I guess this is about in the context of game design, um, to add on to that. You know, game design and Bird programming. Doesn't f feel fulfilled until he's doing something for himself as a side project. Yes, but uh, uh, if no, you... I, I think addendum just Bird mm. doesn't feel fulfilled. Also true. Ouch. <laughs> but true. <laughs> keep, keep. Well, that's what you're letting like our behind the scene conversations creep into the podcast. <laughs> Only I do that. I mean, I'm really, making a joke. You're the ones that's revealing things. <laughs> it's actually something that I've heard from a lot of uh, cr creative people that mm. there's always so much to do, so many things that you want to accomplish right. in so little time, and you also like try brands. You know, like I wanted to take up crochet at one point, and then I realized, uh, no I should, uh, mm -hmm. well, also, I mean, I, I just I have to focus mm. on my digital painting first and foremost. Yeah. But yeah, if you want to, Green's got that. That guy's got yeah. like ten different YouTube channels that are all successful, <laughs> and he never feels like he's doing enough. Damn. Who Wait, is this? what are the ten channels about? Like, mm. do, what do they cover? <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> and probably every creative skill. Uh, yeah, who's, um, Hank, who's Hank Green I've never again? Heard Just, of them. He's one of the refreshing. Vlog Brothers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those people well, that are really influential, like important YouTube shit. people, but you don't know about. So could you have one on like cooking? Well, one on. I mean, oh, to I be can fair, also sing too. Oh wait, I also can uh, craft. To be fair, this and such. If, I mean, that's very possible. I remember I was like, I could do cosplay. I could do. <laughs> uh, I could mm. do art. I could do jewelry. If, I his could brother do, is like, John no. Green. God damn! What <laughs> jeans do they have? Wait, yeah, the, 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 so those are the vlog brothers. Is one of them has, one of them runs like fifty channels. The other one also helps, but also wrote all of those books that are turning into movies right now. So they're oh, busy. Wait, what movies? What movies? Uh, the, the, the Fault, Fault in, our in Our Stars, stars. and Paper Towns. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with so that. So just right. going off the so sidebar of vlog brothers itself, with dubious credit of who's running what and stuff. Vlog brothers see, sidebar I shows. Too. Crash mm -hmm. Course, SciShow, The Art Assignment, Brain Scoop, Sexplanations, Healthcare Triage, How to wow. Adult, the Lead, Be Lizzie Bennett Diaries, Hank Games, 100 Days, and also they have a podcast called Dear Hank and John. Oh, and there's Dang. Hank's channel. Uh, <laughs> and that's the thing. Why, why have them all on separate channels unless they make so much content no, it makes, they have it to makes put a it lot on of different sense. channels? Mm -hmm. They're all like, different content. You don't want to throw everything onto one channel because nobody will... So yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> well, like the questions one. I mean, you guys are just having the podcast. Well, for it's questions because the podcast isn't big enough or frequent yeah. enough that it would need it. Yeah. But like, for yeah. example, if I started doing like really in depth, like educational videos, I'd probably mm -hmm. put that on a completely different channel. Yeah, uh, or if Wander was suddenly doing like weekly speed paint videos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but you have. A I, I do actually action. put. I, I do actually put some of my speed art on the channel, and it doesn't yeah. do terribly. But, but a, a large number of like even let's players will put their side stuff on different channels. Like they'll have their podcast mm -hmm. channel, or they'll have like I know like Splattercat Gaming, for example. Like they have a channel called Roll for It, which is their tabletop gaming channel. That's yeah. completely separate in entity and everything. Although sometimes these people will make their side stuff to side in a way that no one ever knows it exists. <laughs> And yep, they have yeah. nothing to promote its, its existence, and that, that's when it gets weirder. But, yeah, diversification doesn't yeah. hurt. There you was never a know point... when one thing just will stop working. Yeah. Yep. There was a point I was trying to make earlier, because uh, uh, tying into the question that prompted this, I think it was asked within the context of game development. And I just want to make mm -hmm. a, a point, because um, we were talking about something very relevant here, which is like multi-talent, diverse, diversifying your own talents. 
And I will say that um, the more talents you can pick up, like if you can draw and make music and program, like yeah, the easier that is your life so is going to be for game yeah. development. But it's not just game development, though. Like yeah. just in general. Well, yeah. One thing I'm trying to think of is uh, that Elysian Tail Dust. Yeah. Did he that was do done by the artist. He did everything. Or, he didn't yeah. do the voice acting. He didn't do the voice acting or the music, but he did the programming and the artwork. Which honestly is a bit well, of a and mistake animation in his would case. Go in with art. <laughs> so animation's a different skill. Sure, but yeah, yeah. he did that as well. Mm -hmm. Dean is a machine, for, though. <laughs> for me, Dust looked great until every time a character showed up in a conversation. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did not. I did not like the talking animations. They bothered yeah. me. But the one thing to remember is that the most important skill with game development is the programming. So if you can emphasize, if you want to go into it, emphasize your skill as a programmer because that is what drives what you're capable of doing. And everything revolves around that more than anything else. Because you can have a game without an artist, but you can never have a game without a programmer. So that's my, that's my spiel on it. If you Not want to get into game, game dev, anyway. definitely approach it. Um, if you really, really want to make your games happen you got to pick it up from the programming perspective and then do get as good as art as you possibly can along the side and just accept that um, it's you're going to be really, really slow. You're going to be really slow if you try to do the programming and the art, let alone just make the programming takes forever. So, yeah, I think that satisfactorily answers that question. Yep. I hope. I think I uncovered every single pebble for it. But Speaking yeah, of smaller that was a projects. great question. Thank you for asking it. Yeah. Speaking of smaller projects, by the way, can we just talk about for a moment that like Night in the Woods is really neat? Hmm. Yeah. It yeah, it is. That's a real neat I little game it. full of happy. It's, yeah. like, it's a neat game, but I think I kind of hate their developers. I follow I follow them on Twitter, and they're very, very rude and very pushy about their opinions. And Aww. like I've tried to correspond with them uh, for like a couple of things because I wanted to, you know, use some of the music in my videos mm -hmm. because I can't DDR at all. And they sent me this like really kind of snubbish like, yeah, just go here, and then sent me like a, a link to request the game. And then, you know, just kind of uh -huh. ignored every other thing. Mm. And it's just like, I... Well, I know that when I was looking at the uh, their Twitter pages, or at least the Twitter page for the artist of the game, mm. uh, they were unhappy with the fact that they were getting so many requests by people being like, I made fan art from, you know, Night in the Woods. Can I sell it at conventions? And it's just like, uh... The Twitter is nothing but fan art. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and DeviantArt and a couple other places, but it's one of those things Oh, here's things Garfield. Where... That's pretty funny. Yeah. So, so did the people who made this game come from anywhere, like, as far uh, as, like, previous projects no, go? Or no, is this their uh, first high-profile yeah. thing? They've made other things, from what I remember. Like, the weird thing is they're Finji, which has published a lot of games in the past, but these aren't... It's hard to tell, because, like... They both publish games, but I think this is this and Overland are like their first first party developed games. This game is this not is the guy credited that made Cannibal, as right. This game is not credited Finji? as being developed by Finji. Oh, but they're associated with Finji though. Yeah, they're put this, well. It's published by Finji. Yeah, but it's, so it's part it's of their developed team, by like Infinite Falling or something like that. Yeah, but like part of their team is the the uh, the Finji people. Like that's the that's why my answer is so weird because some of them are like the Fiji people and some aren't mm. um because when we were uh when we were there like one of the developers had worked on both when you were uh, where? Night in the, well I, sorry there uh pack south sorry gotcha. my brain was elsewhere uh when yeah, we were at fine. pack south they had you know the Fiji booth and they had both and they had the developer talking about both games and mm. it was weird but um I don't know. I like Night in the Woods. Uh, you I haven't liked... gotten to the end yet, though, so I can't the really complain. The reason about why it. I asked I was just because I, commentary. I just I thought that maybe uh, if they haven't had a high profile project before, I was wondering if maybe they are super responding poorly to spotlight that they've never had to deal with before. Well, I, I think, think it's like that with the artists yeah. because suddenly they have true. 
Though mm -hmm. I, I've been totally to I have been totally honest, I have I have interacted with like numerous developers in the past that mm -hmm. have been way more positive about like my coverage of their games, and that was their first game. Like uh, the dude from Tower of Guns was so thankful for like coverage that he sent us yeah. things mm -hmm. that his wife had crocheted for us, <laughs> uh, or like the guy for Nefarious who did it mostly mm -hmm. as kind of like a side project joke thing, you know, being like, yeah. You know, this is this is gonna be fun. He had been working on it for years, and though. It was like, like a, he was a story he really wanted to get out. Yeah, but like, mm -hmm. uh, we ran into him and his face just like lit up. And it's like... I don't know, it just bugs me when I send like, a fairly polite email just asking for something simple and they're just like, yeah, yeah, just go over here. And it's just like, I... Uh, I'm not asking like for 30 bucks here, man. <laughs> yeah, I wonder <laughs> if really bugs know. me. I wonder if they're swamped, just because I wonder how much... Like, how, how busy is that time, inbox right now? At the time, nobody was covering the game. Like, Commander Holly had done, like, a video, and we had done a bunch, mm -hmm. and, like, some other smaller YouTubers. But like, there's this also, before like... Jack Septic Eye picked it up, so... Uh -huh. Hmm. Right, and for a while we were getting a lot of views, I think maybe because of our voice acting or the fact that it was a dual oh, yeah. commentary. We did fairly well for the series. Actually, one of our friends was uh, watching the series, and she had mentioned it on Facebook, and I was like, Oh, hey, actually, you know, Carl and I are playing that game, and sh she was one of our classmates from school, school, so she's like, Oh, what channel do you guys go by? And it's like, you know, WonderBots. Mm. She looks and she's like, That's the series I've been watching. I didn't know it was you at all. Ah. <laughs> so, yeah. just... Just For fun. me, one of the I, fun surprises has just been like, like, there's always fan art when a game like this gets attention like this, like Undertale and stuff, but this game mm -hmm. now, uh, mm -hmm. and I guess Undertale had this too a bit, but like this game specifically has three songs that show up over the course of it that are fully instrumented but have no, they have no uh, vocals. They have lyrics but no vocals. Yeah, and it's and like so saying, a lot of people it's did their like own saying, songs. I dare you, basically, yeah. to the internet. So now well, the internet's full of like really. Yeah. There's so many really good covers of those songs with added vocals. We did and really stuff. bad covers. <laughs> okay, okay. So part of it was I had to figure out the tune. Yeah. And so then... so Shell did the singing for the first two, and I did the last one. Well, you did the last mm -hmm. one because it was screamo, so it was just fine. Wow. And then the first one, the first one. It was metal. We had mm -hmm. we had one uh, one play go go through, and I like flubbed a line or so, and I'm like, hey, can we go back? And and he's like, no, I have to put this video up. Because it was the second episode. Yeah, this so is like the like, second episode. I, I like, need at least three no, takes. Yeah, yeah, this is like second episode, and I was like super, well, super late already. Because like too, I'm always a, strapped for time. A lot of the covers that I've listened to of it, it seems like people are using the um, the after processing where mm. they add echo and reverberation. Yeah, I have no idea how to edit edit any kind of video for, like, it's music. For singing, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so, singing I've or done, music. I've, I've weirdly gained some experience with that because of my own videos like that, <laughs> where I do some voice processing to try to make it mm. work better. I That's mean, a weird throw thing on, on a little resume. bit of reverb and then uh, double tra track yourself. So I've self harmonized. Sing it once, then sing it again, and then yeah. put them together at the same time, and that's like eighty percent of how to do a professional. And I have um, done that enough yeah, voice I noticed, track. I noticed that that uh, when we were doing the second video, we had taken two or three takes, and mm -hmm. we were trying to compare which one sounded better for specific Just sections. Just put two so that takes together, together, and then you yeah, usually I get a really good result it out of that. Yeah, I when I was singing with myself. That sounded mm -hmm. fun. For yeah. for both the portal songs, I think I sang them four times and overlaid them and made one of them louder than the other th than the other ones. That, but that's that's the way to do it. Yeah, and then for uh for uh I, what's it called? I don't want the the the, the I fall don't three want song. to set the world on fire. Yeah, uh, the ink spots. Yeah, for the ink Whatever spots song, I I sang in two different octaves. <laughs> oh, fun! That was a trip. But yeah, there's there's some tricks you can do to make it work a little better than, yeah. than standalone live stuff. But it's uh, yeah, because you, you when a make person's it, you singing can't make a cappella on talent. their own, it's difficult without <laughs> yeah. like a chamber. The the other problem is just baseline. It's very hard to do some of these things uh, with when you're trying to do daily episodes for a let's play. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, we've gotten a lot of requests to, to do them over with, like, the actual processing and stuff, and it's like, uh, I'd like to, but... Send it to like, birds, he can do it. <laughs> yeah. That is so I far from, guess. like... <laughs> He's got a degree I mean, in who's a what's-its. <laughs> I, I do know how to, to mix and master. Himself. Yeah. <laughs> I do know how to mix and master, actually, in my opinion, reasonably well, 
but um, I don't have want time to. to write a whole lot <laughs> of music nor do I to. want to. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, isn't there an Adobe program for it? I think I. You could definitely do it in Adobe. You could do it in Premiere. Just I did it in really? Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah. Because like, we have the tools for it. And, I just don't uh -huh. have the time or the interest to mm -hmm. like sit down and just do it all. Yeah, because yeah. I think as an extension of my desire to eventually get a MIDI controller to compose my music, I'd, I'd like to be able to do uh, singing as well, but uh, it's one of those side things. For me, Just it's like also... like what Bert and I were talking about. Oh, too, yeah. many, too many projects. Yeah. For me, it's also Something one of those where, it. like, I don't want to be known for my music. Uh, like... You know the the music that I put on my channel to be known for. Well, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> he if refuses do, to sing. Say if we do like really highly edited, uh, say videos, uh, related to like a song in oh, a game. He's afraid of putting a weird thing on his channel that then takes off and becomes the thing on uh, his channel. Oh yeah, yeah, because that's what his... scrap mechanic Especially was. Especially if it's a joke. Yeah, it's like how <laughs> Prozy D's channel used to be a series of goofy songs, and now it's just really, really funny. God, yeah. I love Pro CD. <laughs> well, but like he very clearly kind of embraces that. Whereas, like, mm -hmm. if I just did like a joke, like sing along, goofy thing, you and would then suddenly that you got, would like, put too... out like four videos on it, and it would go from like a million well, views to like thirty. That's like <laughs> the problem is like uh, that's what I did with Fallout. I did Fallout as a complete joke. You know, I was just yep. like, I'm just gonna not leave Sanctuary, and like I don't know what I'm doing, and so on and so forth, like that. And I'm very like. I'm very obvious that I'm, like, not treating this seriously at all. I have so many people, like, day in, mm -hmm. day out, still just leaving comments like, This guy doesn't know how to fucking play Fallout 4. <laughs> like, how could this guy, like, do a series like this without doing pri prior research and stuff like that? And I'm, like, very clearly saying, like, it's this like, is sorry kind of a Patreon thing. Sorry for having fun in video games. Yeah. 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 And, like, people are pissy at me because I'm not role-playing enough, even though I said, like, I wasn't going to. And then they got pissy at me because, I don't know, it's just this, like, infinite I love that you played bad. Fallout normally. At launch, and yeah. you are now like a famous Fallout player in some capacity, and like yeah. many of your most famous videos are, right now are all part oh. ones of various Fallout shows that are, and none of them are the actual playthrough of Fallout. <laughs> oh yeah, nobody watched uh, my yeah. my Fallout it's zombie survival challenge. Never through. leave the vault. Never leave Sanctuary and Frost. And I don't even want to know the episode counts for some of those. It generally, about fifty was the end 40, point. 50, Thirty yeah. to fifty. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's interesting for artists too because uh, I did like two World of Warcraft pieces of my uh, characters from the game, mm -hmm. and uh, those ones. I mean, being fan art, and then you become a fan art. Views. Yeah, they got all the views and the likes, and suddenly, like my Twitter doubled in, in the number of followers and such. You should and you should make if, um wow smut. Oh, no you can make a lot way. of money making WoW smut. No Do it, Shell. Become, become a smut artist. Well, actually, and the, the interesting thing the is a number, is a number of the followers oh, yeah. uh, and fans were people that also made World of Warcraft fan art. But apparently, mm -hmm. there's there's like a whole uh, there's like a whole business to it where people oh, like yeah. to go to BlizzCon with badges of their character. So. Mm -hmm. It's actually, I mean, people make a lot of money drawing custom character they portraits. Make you can't understate how much money some of these artists make. Some of them make like $300,000 a year. Oh yeah, I know. That's like yeah. that's like Sakimi Chan and, and, and people. And then like what Wanda was saying, I, I know a couple of people, because I used to hang out with furries. Yeah. Furries? Used, oh yeah. I mean, isn't like the, aren't the, the top grossing community. people on Patreon all cosplayers and porn artists? Yes. But I, I know yeah, it's like some... Jessica Neg Negri, I think her yeah. name is, and uh, probably Yaya Han for a while, but she's branched mm -hmm. off into like television shows and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's a weird career path to take. Go from cosplayer well, they were, to like they were cosplay television shows. To like, so oh, that's true. She became a judge a cosplay. for a cosplay mm -hmm. show and other things. Good for her. But yep. that's like saying it's weird to transition from being a football player to a television ho uh, a television show host, but the show is Announcer. of course. Did you yeah. guys an see the for football? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shell, who is the baseball person that that exploded the bird the in two thousand one? Wonder you're at two hundred and eighty Fallout episodes. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. Was it the something Ramos or? I don't. I don't he? remember. Anyway, there was a, uh, there was a uh, baseball player that exploded a bird back in two thousand one. It was so sad. You know, sad. he was the. 
Oh, I think it was with the pitch. pitcher. He threw the yeah, fastball yeah. and it exploded. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah, it exploded a bird like straight up, and it was really that, impressive. How did bird, that bird, bird just happen to die at that luck. moment? At but that... now he's actually like a really good pro photographer, and his icon is an exploded bird, <laughs> <laughs> like his logo and stuff, and it's great. Uh, funny. But, but yeah, yeah it, a couple of uh, Randy people Johnson, I know. There we go. Yeah. A furry couple community. of people that I know that went and became like we found professional right like furry hole. smut art <laughs> funny furry smut artists they make so much money the couple that like made it work for them and I'm like huh how do you do it how how can you like uh, like make that your calling in life and then I realized that they were always kind of weird people and I'm like oh there's nothing <laughs> to really question there. <laughs> Never thought I'd make more tangential relations to people who know furry smut artists, but here we are. Because uh, TLE already knew more, mm -hmm. and who oh, knows yeah, how many people just don't talk about it in our group that apparently may know even more of them. We'll just have this spider web of people that we didn't think we wanted to be. Turns out to. everyone's a furry, but you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Wander made like Sonic the Hedgehog fan art, so that's kind of like being a furry. Not uh, much. I, I did mean, like what two pieces. I, I think part of being a furry though is Wander you have to have your fursona. You have to have a, a furry version of yourself. And what was your right? fursona? It was uh, Wander the Hedgehog. <laughs> no, it was just literally a cat. <laughs> just a picture of a cat. You Google the cat, and you're like, "That's me." Uh, Keith, what's your we, fursona? When we went to PAX, my uh, brother actually East, had one. We met. Um, who was your friend? His girlfriend oh. was a professional, like. Oh artist. yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. Um, actually, Bird, you'd know this guy. He was the dude that did all the wrestling let's plays on the IRC. Um, Possum. Oh, him. Yeah, Possum. Yeah, yeah his he was girlfriend. Funny. I loved his, his yeah, channel. Yeah, so she and I, when we were having mm -hmm. dinner at uh, what's the place North. Something or other. Oh, Faneuil Hall. Hmm. Faneuil Hall. Uh, yeah, so when we were at Faneuil Hall, she and I were just talking about commissioning and art and furry art and whatnot, so. Yep. I imagine at this point, our chat is just like, so here we are. Yep. <laughs> our gaming podcast. We've been talking about furry smut for 20 minutes. <laughs> Happens. Uh, you know what? That's actually a pretty good uh, ending topic if we want no, to call it's it not. that. We need something <laughs> weirder. No. Wander, have you um, pooped lately? Tell us a poop I'll, story again. Um. Oh, okay. Here's okay. Fine. Here's no, no. 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 Yes. Don't, don't no, call my bluff. For it. Don't you call my bluff. You did this to yourself. All right. No, so, um, I hate when that happens. I really like. I, I'm big you on do food it every tourism. Time. I know. I, I, I'm big on food tourism. You know, I go to a new place and I'd like to find fun You're restaurants. Big on poop tourism. There's a difference. <laughs> well. I, well, the poop always. This has to is come the after aftermath. The so, um, <laughs> so we've we've moved to Kansas, and we're looking for good Indian food and good Thai food because that's what Rochester. Had and I think the first Thai place was pretty much you know like a B plus, and mm -hmm. we haven't found better, so we've just been kind of going back there. And it's you know they have good curry, but their pad Thai is okay, and their selections really limited. Uh -huh. Indian food, on the other hand, I, I I told you guys about the like really aggressive, uh, yeah, yeah. raider. Well, okay, so the last time we went there, the really aggressive waiter more or less shoves, like, really awful, like, he's like, he, sweet naan, and then it was like, on you. it was like, super spicy, and I was like, this isn't sweet naan, what is this? Um, and, you know, just like, his, his behavior kind of turned us off of eating there. So we tried a new place recently, and this is like the sixth Indian buffet we've tried in the area. Um, uh -huh. And supposedly it had gotten better reviews than the other ones. Yeah, it had like so. a 4.5 or whatever on Google. We go there and the food was boring. And, and, and not very warm. Yeah, not very like warm. Lukewarm. And then the next day, Shell and I are like... <laughs> running to the bathroom. We are, we are like, you know, firemen, like the, the bucket line to the bathroom. Like, I was, I was <laughs> going and she's dancing next to me being like, get off, get off, get off. Because she needed to go next. <laughs> And um, this is not an uncommon occurrence when we're trying to find like a new Thai or um, uh, the problem of having a one Indian. bathroom apartment, yeah. which most apartments do. <laughs> uh, no. Anyway, so uh, I, I think they're thoroughly grossed out. Bird, you satisfied? <laughs> yeah. 
three, and we two, all one. Leave satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, just, thanks just for watching. Four nerds save right the forward. universe. You um, asked for this episode nineteen. Send your questions to forwardnerdsquestions <laughs> at gmail dot com. Should we set and up we'll one st- specifically we'll start for asking poop? them, and then we'll go on tangents to seven other things. Then forget we ever asked it in the first place, and then <laughs> hey, I answered email. the shit out of that bio question. It's the one figure. question I'm qualified to answer. Hey, I, I answered well, the shit out of so your bio question. There were really no questions for the week because we asked it really late. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm looking at like eight questions. I'm iffy on. <laughs> Iffy. So they're iffy ones. Okay. I'm iffy on poop stories. Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, you can send us emails about Wander's poop stories. Uh, Please don't. See you next time. Please don't. I'll read all, all right. of them. <laughs> that was all that was all of my poop stories. No, it wasn't. That was not all the of end. my poop stories, so I'm not gonna tell them. <laughs>